when you see limits with radicals. So rationalizing the radical, doesn't matter if the radical is in the numerator or in the denominator, we're going to want to multiply by the conjugate. Again, looking over conjugate, the conjugate is the exact same expression, but with a different value. Or sorry, so if this is subtraction, then we're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is x plus 1 plus 2. And whatever you do in the numerator, you have to do in the denominator to produce equivalent fractions. Okay. Oh, sorry. We can't use direct substitution here, right? Because when we just plug in direct substitution, it goes to 0. But the first thing you would, would want to do is check that. So now we go ahead and multiply. Now again, what's the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1? It's just going to be x plus 1, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is just going to be minus 2. Now, why am I skipping ahead? Why am I not doing the middle terms? Because what happened to the middle terms? They canceled out. Yes? So why did we do it on the numerator and denominator? Well, there is no radical in the denominator. So that's why, basically. We're trying to get rid of the radical, is our basic idea. And then in the denominator, we're just going to leave this as x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. x plus 1. Oh, I'm sorry. I multiplied that wrong. That's 4. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Okay. Now, when we go ahead and simplify this, this becomes x minus 3 all over x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. Uh-oh. What happens with the x minus 3s? Okay, so now, as x approaches 3, I can just directly substitute 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 2 equals 1 over square root of 3 plus 1 plus 2. 3 plus 1 is 4. Uh, square root of 4 is 2. So that's going to be 1 half plus 2. Sorry. ends up being 1 fourth. Wait a minute, that's plus 1. Yeah, and then you evaluate 3. OK, 4. Yep. Questions? No? You guys want to try one?